So, we've all seen the video, or the gif of a video, of a gif, or a good gif, whereby an old man sits at his desktop computer and proceeds to put the My Computer icon of Windows 95 into the recycle bin, whereby the physical machine itself pops out of existence. The confused old man then calls to his wife, or who I presume to be his wife, who is no doubt furious for all her latest Quake saves, and now gone for all eternity. The question is, what would happen if we did this in real life? We took the My Computer icon and put it in the recycle bin. Would the desktop machine disappear? Let's find out. I can't believe I'm bloody doing this. Waste of time. For this task, I'll be using a Packard Bell Club PC from 1998. This actually has an Intel Celeron processor, one of the very first, and was donated to me by Chris at Games You Loved. Ultimately, it's perfect for the job in hand. Here is the glorious desktop. I know it's Windows 98 rather than 95, but for this test, it's exactly the same. I'll just reposition my computer and the recycle bin for easier visibility, and let's move it across. Of course, what really happens is Windows prevents you from even performing the action. I mean, if you were to put my computer in the recycle bin, you'd be telling Windows to delete all the data from all your drives. And no one wants that, do they? Now, I want to show you OS2 work. This is um, a cup of tea. It's also not really feasible. It would be like a cat trying to consume itself starting at the tail end. There would be a point where the cat would either get a grip of itself or just die. So rather than that, we just get this little stop symbol, a bit like we're being told off. It's not just my computer Windows gets narky about either. If you try and put the Microsoft network in there, for example, it gets upset, or anything which Microsoft has deemed essential to the operating system. It's clear they understand where Internet Explorer belongs, however, as it not only lets you delete it, it doesn't even allow it in the recycle bin. Marvellous self-awareness, Microsoft, even back in 1998. You can create shortcuts of all these icons, of course, and put them in the recycle bin, but then you're simply recycling a shortcut to the main event, a link, if you will, which has no effect on functionality. But maybe there's another way. Maybe we can access Recycle Bin by other means. Well, first let's explore a bit about how this bin came to be. After all, it's prudent to know your enemy. If we look back at graphical user interfaces, we usually start with NLS, developed in 1968 by Douglas Engelbart. It was the first to make use of a mouse, linking, windowing, and many features we associate with modern operating systems. This laid the foundations for Xerox's Alto system shown here, which was another stepping stone, and indeed the inspiration for Steve Jobs to create the GUI for Apple Lisa. The first to incorporate what was known as the wastebasket, which carried over to the Macintosh as trash. Here, when a file is deleted, it's sent to a trashes folder, which can then be cleared out. With Microsoft, however, such functionality wouldn't appear, of course, until Windows 95, launching in August 1995. 
Wait a minute, who the hell takes a full-blown desktop computer into a coffee shop? But Microsoft had already been building up to it under their previous operating system, DOS. Give me five. Give me five. Upgrade to MS-DOS 5. Make DOS applications come alive. Now, DOS is a command line driven interface, so things are a little different, but in MS-DOS version 5, released in June 91, we had the first steps using the mirror command. Using mirror, you could activate a memory resident program to track any files which have been deleted, in the hope of recovering if needed. Now, this isn't the same as the recycle bin, because anything you delete is at risk of annihilation if overwritten by something else. All we have instead is a copy of the disk's file allocation table so that DOS can attempt to recover data if required. In DOS 6, this functionality was merged into the undelete command, which also added a sentry option. If this terminate and stay resident portion is loaded, then any files deleted will be moved to a hidden sentry folder, allowing for full restore later if necessary. Pretty much exactly like the recycle bin, although with some limitations regarding directories, but we won't get into that. If you have Windows 3.1 and DOS 6.22, then you also got a set of tools allowing you to use utilities such as undelete in the relative safety of Windows. Here you can see if I delete this bitmap file I created earlier, I can restore it. Well, mostly. It appears everything can be recovered apart from the first letter of the file name. Given Windows 3.1 is simply running on DOS, I would still need the sentry component of undelete loaded to recover it fully. So back to Windows 95 or 98 in this instance, can we seek out the recycle bin folder itself using the DOS command prompt? Well yes, we can. It's a hidden folder, just like that sentry directory was. There it sits, plain as day in the root directory. I can even copy files in and out using the DOS prompt. However, they don't actually show up in the graphical recycle bin. Even if I choose to empty the recycle bin, they don't get deleted from the actual folder. That's because Windows is a bit smarter than that, and actually tracks the files which are sent there. If I drop stuff in there outside of Windows, it'll be left alone. So. Although we could manually move the entire contents of this drive into that recycle folder, ultimately, what the hell is the point? Nothing amazing will happen, the PC won't disappear, all it will do is stop working, and then we'll have to put everything back to where it was and just wonder what the hell we're, well, what I'm doing with my life. But we could of course try moving the icon itself from the desktop directory to the recycle bin and settle for that. Oh, no it doesn't exist as an actual file. All then that's left to do is erase all icons from the desktop altogether. Only then will I be sated. So, to summarise, you can't put the My Computer icon in the recycle bin through conventional means, but you can move everything here through brute force and determination if you want. Fantastic. So, here we are. We all knew what was going to happen, we knew what this video was about, you knew when you clicked on the icon. I just hope I made it a little bit more worthwhile for you to stick around until the end. So, thanks for watching, have a great evening and hopefully I'll see you next time.